what's going on, man? It's Marcus Lancaster, CEO and founder of UTS Sports. I'm in Las Vegas and I'm clocked in with Ceno Sports. Check them out at CenoSports.com. We here, clocked in. Yo, it's your boy Drayford here again for Ceno Sports. We got a, hey, this gentleman, he needs no introductions. He got many things popping and going on. We got Marcus Lancaster here and uh, he's from the MI with no crooked letters. Go ahead and tell them about yourself, brother. Yeah, man, uh, Marcus Lancaster, CEO and founder of UTS Sports. Uh, we've been doing a lot of stuff nationwide for the past seven years. Uh, it'll be eight years, May 5th, uh, 2021. I'm also director of UTS Elite AAU program, one of the top AAU program, top independent, as when I say independent, because we got it out the mud the past four or five years. So we're one of the top independent programs in the country. And I'm also a, a, a new sports agent with SAI, Strategic Athlete Initiative. One thing we want to do with Ceno Sports is definitely give a, a shout out and a highlight to these girls out here doing things, uh, pressing the envelope forward on on some of these sports. And with basketball being your forte, what is it like coaching girls and, and having a team of girls compared to the guys? Yeah, what's funny is, man, I, I really I really enjoy and, and my, I hope my guys don't get mad. My, my boys teams don't get mad. But I really enjoy coaching the girls a little bit more than the, than the guys. Um, I had the opportunity to coach high school basketball at St. Francis uh, down in Alpharetta, Georgia uh, for a year. And then uh, that next year, um, I did very well. Did very well that year. Did very well on skill development. That next year, I got a college job, college opportunity to coach at Southeastern Illinois, where I, uh, I was an assistant coach for the men's, but also assistant coach on the women's. And I'm just being I'm just being honest, like I've really enjoyed working with the girls a little bit more just because of the, not not because of the physical the physical piece but just the, the style of play the iq um and, and just being coachable that's one of the things that i do uh think as far as on the girl side um that it that that's a little bit more uh potent or a little bit more um just being able to push out a little bit easier than the boys because with the boys you do you got to deal with attitudes you got to deal with egos things like that not saying girls don't have that same situation but you know they're just a little bit more coachable a for me, yeah, humble, a little bit more me. humble, yeah. a lot, actually a lot more humble, um, but a little bit more coachable. And I, to me, I'm not going to say that they work harder, but they do. <laughs> they do. They do. Um, and, you know, so I want to give a shout out. Like I said, I want to give a shout out to UTS Lady Elite, which is uh, we just started that girls program this year. Um, shout out to all the girls that played with us last year. Shout out to Faith Carson. Shout out to uh, Samaya Jefferson. Shout out to shout out to um, Trinity Starlin and, uh, and the rest of the crew. We going up this year. What made you start a 4U team back in 2017? Okay. Well, that 14U team was my eighth grade, uh, my eighth grade team. I actually just moved back to Michigan. I was coaching college basketball at the time at uh, Southeastern Illinois Community College down in Illinois. And uh, so I was going back and forth. I uh, was going back and forth a lot from Illinois to back to Michigan and doing a lot of trainings. And uh, I had probably about seven or eight uh, really good guys going into the eighth grade. They were going into their eighth grade year. And uh, we did all, obviously we did a ton of training. So we were doing a, a lot of training uh, on the weekends when I came back. And uh, I just kind of kind of peeped and recognized how many good guys that was in our training program that I could put together a team and, uh, and, and you know, try to make some make some noise in the city at that time. That was that was a, a quick dream as far as, you know, putting putting on for the city, getting our youth uh, from our community and, and giving them an opportunity, giving them a platform uh, to basically dance on the dance floor. Um, so we, we put that together and uh, we blew up. We blew up. Uh, we beat. What's funny is we beat a couple EYBL teams as an independent team. Beat a couple Adidas teams. Uh, a couple Under Armour teams. And uh, you know we traveled. Traveled. Went to Ohio. Uh, also, you know, went to Wisconsin. Went to Chicago and played some of the top talent. And uh, from there, man, we just we just kind of spread it out. Every year, uh, we added more teams. Now on the boys side, we have uh, four teams total. We have a fifteen, a fifteen U. A 14U, 15U, 16U, and a 17U team. We oh. just started a girls program this past season. Uh, so now uh, this upcoming season, 2021, uh, we'll have two uh, two uh, girls t teams on that side of the uh, program. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I see the diversity there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then uh, what was the inspiration behind doing the basketball skill development training out here in Las Vegas? Uh, what's, what's funny is I, I've been back and forth to Las Vegas a few times for the past four or five years. Um, and, you know, I always, man, Vegas was, is a very attractive city. And, uh, you know, I always, you know, 
watched, you know, the summer leagues out here in Vegas. So I know what's going on out here. And I know it's a, it's a huge market. And, you know, if you can get a chance to get some quality work from a, from a professional trainer or professional skill development trainer, however you want to call it, um, I felt the need that, you know, Las Vegas could use me, uh, you know, just coming out and, and visiting and just giving out quality work. Now, with COVID being so rapid right now, uh, give some tips to the youth trying to get noticed and recruited to play at, at the collegiate oh, level. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I know COVID slowed a lot of things down. Uh, you know, it tried to slow us down, but, you know, we, we just had to think outside the box a little bit. So what we did, I'm, first I'm going to tell you what we did, and then I'm going to also give just give some tips to the youth as well. Uh, so what we did, though, uh, obviously Michigan was shut down at the time, so we didn't have any – we really didn't even have a, a big time AAU season like we planned, but we we started late, obviously due to COVID. I think we started in June. So we ended up going June, July, August. Uh, Michigan was shut down, so we didn't have any tournaments in Michigan. So I took I took five teams at the time. I took five teams and we traveled. We went to Indiana six times. Uh, we went to Wisconsin twice, and then we went to Illinois once. Um, and so we just, we found other ways, found other top tournaments that, that was still moving you know, during that COVID or a little bit after the COVID, but it was still COVID. Um, so, you know, obviously temperatures being checked, face masks, limited uh, people in the gym, in the facilities. Um, but we, we did everything we need, needed to do to take steps, you know, to make sure our guys get that, our guys and our girls get that platform to play on. You know, I wasn't letting the COVID stop us. Now, you know, for, um, for our student athletes, both men and both girls and boys, uh, I just wanna try to encourage them to just keep, keep grinding. You know, uh, every day you got to be working on your game every day, uh, whether you ball handling in the room, ball handling in your basement, push ups, sit ups, cow raises on the stairs, cow raises while you in the shower. Just the little things while you, you know, if it's if you're going through some things, um, but also, you know, during your workouts, during your doing everything, if film is everything right now. Social media is a huge platform. You can utilize social media to the death I'm telling you. Um, and so, you know, just get, get film out there, email coaches, talk to coaches. I don't care if they don't respond, keep emailing them, keep, keep pushing out, pushing out and just, just get a list. Okay. This is who I reached out to. This is who I reached out to and continue to reach out to others. And, you know, when you're doing videos, just like on social media, um, tag people, tag, and I tag, I tag a hundred people every time you, they may not like it. They may not love it. They may not share it, but you're going to see it. You definitely gonna see it. So, right. you know, I just want to encourage everybody just to keep it moving, keep grinding, and, and you know, always just perfect your craft, perfect your craft. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, I went JUCO, mm -hmm. and I know that it's Me a too. grind out there. Yeah, yep. and uh, had to send my film out to numerous people, mm -hmm. and I ended up uh, Compton Community College and okay. some other, yeah. you know, yep. Off, yep. Off, hey. off the top, and and got offers. But mm -hmm. overall, I understand what you're saying yep. in terms yep. of the grind. Now, let me ask you this as a follow up to that off, off script, man, mm -hmm. um, with you dealing with the youth heavy, mm -hmm. you definitely showing them on the court what to do mm -hmm. off the court as a student, because they're student athletes. Exactly. And I tell my own son, yes. student become is before the athlete. Right. You can have all the talent in the world and not be able to clear that clearinghouse mm -hmm. and not be able to play. Mm -hmm. So what other, you know, for the teams that, that are under your mentorship mm -hmm. and, 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 and under, your, under you, what do you do off the court as, as a student part of the student athlete? So one, one thing, or well, it's a couple of things that we do. Obviously, when, when we're in season um, and they're in school, the main thing for us is the grades piece. So I, I kind of treat our program uh, some, some similar to, to a collegiate program. We do, um, basically, we, we ask for the grades. We kind of do, we give them sheets. We take, you know, they go to school once a week um, and they, we, we get the grades. We get their grades and obviously if anything slips, if anything slips under a B, we're, we, we don't let you pray. We don't let you play or practice. And so we had, we had a couple guys that we had to use for an example. Uh, and then sometimes it was some of our best players, but that's how you use, that's how you, that's how you get to them. That's how you get to your guys. Um, another thing that we, we like to do, um, other than just that, we do a lot of stuff in the, involved in the community. So, we, you know, we, we host little camps for, for the younger student athletes where some of our older student athletes are coaches. Um, just being able to, you know, interact with younger student athletes and, you know, being a mentor for the younger, for the, for the youth, for the, for the young, young, young youth. Um, and then also, too, we do a lot of, like I said, a lot of community stuff. So just giving back, you know, just giving back as much as we can. Um, and, and then as far as our training program, what we do is, you know, for the community, uh, sometimes, you know, if you're not able 
for, for some of the less fortunate, we do kind of, you know, make sure everybody is not, everybody is locked in. Yeah. So we're not going to, just because financially you may not be in a situation to, you know, uh, pay for the training or pay for the AAU. We do have sponsorships. We do have sponsors uh, that, do, that do help out in the community and, you know, you know, push out and help out for the for the student athletes that's less fortunate. That's great, man. That's great to hear because not everybody has that opportunity mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to, you know, be able to afford. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, I had it even with me going up. I had um, I had to get sponsored a couple of times to yep. go to a couple of camps yep. and combines. Yep. So I, I definitely, you know, I know the kids appreciate yeah, that. They definitely do. Definitely, man. And so my next question for you, brother, is. Uh, with you know who are some of the athletes uh, that are in your program right now or have been in your program right now that have committed to the next level okay you know i, I know you want to throw a highlight on yeah i want to throw a couple highlights on some guys i know so for Just us that 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 eighth grade team that eighth grade team they're they're now 2021 athletes now so that's kind of where we started so actually right now we we have guys that starting to commit now and then we have a couple guys that's getting offers as a 2022 class which is our juniors and then a 2023 class, which are sophomores and things like that. Uh, so uh, some guys that I could kind of highlight that that's been in our program, though, um, a guy named Andrew Anthony. Um, he actually signed uh, with University of Michigan. He's playing football now. He's playing football, though, but he was a hell of an athlete, hell of an athlete. Um, another guy that was involved in our program, um, uh, Kobe Bufkin, he was involved in our program. He just signed with Michigan as well. Um, and so those are two uh, guys that, that has played, that has signed, and that will be playing on that next level. Now uh, for 2022, 2023, we got a, a, a handful of guys now. So we got a, a kid named Brady Titus who just uh, got, a, got, a, got his first offer from Bethune-Cookman University, which is a HBCU yep. wow, uh, down in Daytona, big. Florida. So, and that's a big one. Um, we also have another 2022 guard. He has a couple of different offers right now, but uh, Mason Woods, he's pretty solid. Um, and then I want to go back to the 2021 class real quick. We got a couple guys that's not signed yet, but this kid, Keon Minifield, might be one of the best players in the, in the, in the, in the country. And uh, he's not, you know, he's kind of a late, on the recruitment side, it's kind of late. But, I mean, he's sprouting. He's about 6'2", 6'3", one of the best ball handlers, one of the best shooters and best leaders uh, that I've seen in the game. Uh, another kid, Trinidad Chambliss. Uh, another kid, Contrell Pullian. Another kid, Logan Carson. So, and actually, Logan Carson is over at Ipsy Prep right now playing with Imani Bates at this time. So, um, a lot of these guys, man, um, just be on the lookout for. Uh, we got some 2023 kids, Anthony Sidnor, uh, Jordan Briggs, um, Jayshon Bogarty. Um, David Day. We got a, a lot of guys that's coming up, and uh, we're going. We, we looking forward to pushing these guys out and helping these guys play at that next level. Um, on the girls' side, we have uh, we just started our first year, so they're they're freshmen, uh, actually sophomores um, this year. And uh, Faith Carson is a uh, uh, which is Logan's younger sister, but she's six five. She's the number one prospect in the state of Michigan. Also, one in, also ranked in the top one hundred nationally as well. Uh, she has six total Division one offers. Um, but we got, you know, we got Connecticut. We have, um, we have uh, Mississippi State. We also have. Um, we just picked up one from Bradley for her. She just picked up Pittsburgh. Just picked up Michigan State. Um, so she, those are the offers that she just picked up in less than three months. Okay. Uh, so y'all got to be on the lookout for her. She's actually still growing, um, and she's one of the top top players in the country. Uh, also, we have another young lady, uh, Samaya Jefferson, nicknamed Tiny. Uh, really strong, small guard. That can uh, shoot. That can shoot very well. Can handle the basketball. Great leadership. Um, be on the lookout for her too. She's uh, in the top 25 uh, in the state of Michigan as well. So be on the be on the lookout for that girls program. Shout out to Trinity Starlin too. Just uh, coming off that coming off that injury, but she's another one to look out for as well. All right, bud. You got got a roster on both sides. Oh yeah. Bro. Oh yeah. All right. And then, and then what are some of the things off the court? That you try to teach them it um, just it, it doesn't have to be in terms of academics mm -hmm. but what do you try to teach them off the, off um, the court the main thing is man and, and, and what i want to it is more than just the student athletes i'm speaking to the world on this one um you know follow your dreams continue to follow your dreams don't ever give up on your dreams don't let anyone stop you from your dreams i don't care who it is mom dad cousin sister brother girlfriend boyfriend don't let anyone stop you from your dreams um, you know, perfect your craft, whatever you whatever you want to do. If you're a camera, if you if you record, you're a camera guy, be the best camera guy. If you take out the trash and you're you're a custodian, a custodian, be the best custodian. If you're playing ball, be the best ball player. You know, and 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 once you follow your dreams, man, you'll be able to make your passion your profession. 
right here. You'll be able to make your passion your profession, doing doing what you love to do every day, waking up, just just doing what you love to do. And it's not a job. It, you could turn you could turn that into a career. And so that's that's one thing I want to give a shout out to, uh, and and spread and spread that word to not just student athletes, but everybody. Whether you playing basketball, whatever you're doing in life, um, just just continue to grind and and you know be patient, be humble, be patient, and keep grinding. It, it's gonna come. I promise you. That was powerful, bro. Mm -hmm. Appreciate <laughs> and, it. Um, and then where do you see your program in the next three ah, years? I love that question. Um, obviously, as far as on the training side, because we got three different parts to our program. Uh, on the training side, you know, we're, we just we just uh, obviously partnered up and have our own facility down in uh, Grand, Rapids, uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. So we want to our, our goal in the next two years is actually to add another facility, uh, whether it's in West Michigan. I want to try to get something on the east side in the uh, Detroit area. Um, so for for the training business, we just want to continue to grow. We want to add more trainers to the to the mix um, and just, you know, other than just pushing the brand out, I, I want to help other trainers. Uh, I want to provide jobs. I want to continue to provide jobs for others and be able to spread the word, spread your knowledge uh, of the game to you know all these student athletes. Um, on the AAU side, we're going to continue to just build more teams. Um, we're at four teams on the boys' side, two teams on the girls. We're going to be adding more girls' teams as the years go on. Our goal is to have about eight to ten teams um, at the at the end of it, and we just want to provide that platform for all student athletes. Um, that's the thing on, on that AAU circuit. And then obviously on the agency side, we just want to be able to, you know, put everybody in position to win. If you're blessed, if you're blessed to grow up in our training program, at, at, we start at age six, you're able to grow from there. We're able to play AAU. We're able to help you get to college to that next level. And some, you know, a small percentage, if you're blessed to be able to play at that next level, which is pro level, we're able to represent you. So, you know, that's that's one of our things I wanted to do as a youngin is put everything under one umbrella, under the UTS umbrella. Uh, and UTS stands for unity, trust and solidarity. Basically, just one family. OK, so that's what we kind of just we just want to put everything under one umbrella, like I said, and, and just continue to grow as a program. All right. And and that's that's pretty rare to try to put it all under one umbrella. You know what I mean? It's 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 a lot, you know. But I, I definitely want to hear from you in terms of your agency side. Mm -hmm. What uh, what is your outreach on that? Like who you know? What do you currently have going on yeah. with that? So right now uh, I'm under a Strategic Athlete Initiative, which is SAI. Um, we're we're more of a smaller smaller agency based out of Indiana, um, but you know we're we're growing. We have about 20, 20 professional athletes uh, under our, under our agency. I represent two of them. Um, so the, uh, shout out to Dorian Armstrong. He played college basketball at Texas A&M uh, Commerce uh, Division II. Um, we recently had him in the TBL League, uh, but obviously due to COVID, we had to bring him back home. Um, and then uh, shout out to Antoinette Bannister. We call her Bree. She played at University of Florida, uh, played, also played at North Carolina, and then also finished her career uh, over at uh, Coastal, Coastal Carolina. Um, and so we actually had her in... Um, we, act, we just finished up, got the deal done in Madrid, Spain, uh, but then obviously Madrid, Spain was getting ready to yeah. close. Um, so we had to bring her home due to COVID. Um, so, I mean, our, our goal is just to get back, get back into the swing of things once the world opens back up. And, uh, you know, I'm gonna just continue to put on for both of my, both of my clients. And as of right now, we're gonna continue to grow as well. I have four or five other guys um, that's in the mix too, but it's about getting them a job. Yeah. Um, so for me, I just don't sign clients just to say, oh, I got I got this client signed. I got this client signed. My thing is, I don't want to put anybody on hold. Uh, so if I can get you a job, then we'll get you signed because it's a situation. I was in that situation myself uh, on a professional level where my agent signed me, but he couldn't really get me a job. And yeah. I signed a contract with him, but I couldn't move nowhere. Other guys, other agents had deals for me, but I couldn't move nowhere because I was already signed with him and he wouldn't let me go. So I don't want to ever put anyone in that position. Uh, and and I, I just I want to do things the right way. So as an agent, I want to do I always want to continue to put everybody in the right position. If I can't do something for you, I know somebody who can. OK, right. yeah. And that's that's a major thing. You know, a lot of people try to just lock you up, mm -hmm. you know, it was, don't matter what profession they right. try to lock right. you up yep. Yep. and you yep. can't make moves when you, you want to make moves. so definitely I, I know i know they definitely got mad love for you mm -hmm. you know taking care of them and, and just having that respect for them um and then my last question for you brother mm -hmm. which is was huge for me mm -hmm. huge for Sino sports um if you're talking to a younger you or just a kid out there 
you know, the youth needing some inspiration, what would you say to them to inspire them? Man, like I just said, uh, perfect your craft, man. Perfect your craft. Love what you do. And, and and encourage others. That's the main thing, man. Just continue to encourage others. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to help others. If you're in a position to help someone, even the younger student athletes, if you're in a position to help somebody, be helpful. Be helpful and, and be mindful that everybody, you know, everybody has a different type of upbringing. And when you help, when you help others, I'm telling you to come back tenfold. And so that's that's one of the that's one of the things I just want to encourage other student athletes and professional athletes as well. Always, you know, just don't think about self. Um, and I'm not saying focus on others either, but you know, if you're in a position to help, help as much as you can. And that's 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 the goal. That's the goal, and that's that's what I want to continue to do. All right, bet. Well, brother, we thank you for your time. And uh, we hopefully will have you back out here oh, soon. Yeah, I'll be back out here soon. All right. Yep. Uh, tell the people real quick where they can find you, uh, social media yep. and everything. Uh, so on our website, we have uh, our training website is utsinksports.com. Our AAU website is utselite.com. You can find me on Facebook under Marcus Lancaster or our fan page, UTS Inc. Sports. You can find us on Twitter as uh, C the CEO underscore ML. Uh, and then also Instagram as well, CEO underscore ML. All right. Well, hey, again, we thank you for your time, brother. I know the youth thank you for, you know, spending, you know, your time coming out here and everything from Michigan. And uh, as always, again, my name is Drayford, and uh, we're here with Ceno Sports, and we always clocked in, never clocked out. Right. Good work. I appreciate y'all for having me. Stay clocked in.